Hey there, it's Brie Baron. Welcome to a new video series. This is going to be called Author Tic-Tac-Toe. And basically, what's going to be happening here is we're going to try to get three in a row of books that I've like actively really liked from an author. Hey there, it's Brie and welcome to today's video. So I started this kind of video series concept back a while ago and I started working on uh, one round of it and that is kind of a spin-off idea from Kayla's uh, Third Time's a Charm video series. Like something like that. I can't remember exactly what all of the title ideas were. And then my next idea after that was to call it um, the rule of thirds because um, if you know anything about photography and videography, the rule of thirds is a uh, kind of a framing uh, guide point. I realized that maybe that's not exactly um, the right road to go because I don't like the idea of just limiting it to only three. So now I think this is going to be called DTR. If you don't know what that stands for, it's define the relationship. Um, so I'm going to be defining my relationship with different authors and I think that's what I'm going to call this series. I'm just going to be going and if it's an author that I've read maybe two books from before, I'm mostly focusing on book authors that I've read two books from before and I'm reading a third book from them to kind of define my relationship with that author on how I should move forward with reading from them. So there are different kind of like relationship statuses, so to speak. And I guess I should like make like a status chart of like what statuses it would be. So it's like, like if I friend zone them or if I like a long-term relationship them or if I marry them or what have you. I think that would be really cool actually. So I might have to do that later. For this first round, we're going to be starting with Morgan Matson. I've read two books from Morgan Matson before and I have a third at the ready that I'm going to be reading this week. The first book that I read by Morgan Matson is Since You've Been Gone. I read this in 2019. I gave it four stars. I put a journal for great area of cheating. Um, which is probably part of that to one star that was dropped. I knew it was the last episode of this book, however, there were a few plot holes, mainly some issues with the main character. The main character had two of her friends that were never resolved, which is stupid as a wine, but they weren't resolved. I mean, also issues with the great Eugene, all in all, and the majority of the book, a couple of problematic elements. And then I read Amy and Roger's epic detour, which I think came out before. Yeah, published in 2010, and I read it in 2020. Um, this one is a little bit different in the fact that this one is focused on loss and grief. So, plot development, I gave it three, character, relationship development, at five, action scenes, three, uh, dialogue, four, world, uh, and setting descriptions, three, themes, uh, strength and use, three, quality writing, four, tact, four, personal development, four, satisfaction, including four, average, three, twenty. I give this a rating of four as well. Um, as a fan of the book, I think, for sure, I'm working at something after enjoying the two books of hers that I read. Working at Matson in general. What books does she have that I am actively interested in? She has two books coming out this year. Second Chance Summer I'm interested in. Take Me Home Tonight I've heard good things about. We Grant You a Merry Christmas. I would definitely be interested in that. Um, the Firefly Summer is one that I have pre-ordered. Um, it sounds wonderful. It's a middle grade, so that would be a different situation. And then, um, The Unexpected Everything, I don't really know anything about. Um, oh, A Politician's Daughter, meh. Um, mm, A Scandal. I don't know. I'd have to look into it, maybe. Um, but, Um, where's the other Morgan Manson that's supposed to be coming out this year? I swear there was another one. Am I crazy? Is it just the one? I don't know. 
save the date is about a girl whose sister is getting married and she's coming home and it's gonna be like the last time that they're all together at home for a while and first in a while and last in a while um and so it's gonna be kind of you know siblingsy and so i'm excited about that but it's like basically everything keeps going wrong at, uh in the wedding preparations uh that's about all i know this is not the one that i'm the most excited for of morgan Matson's, but okay so i actually got 50 pages in today while at work which is pretty good for me uh starting a book um during the time period that I have and I did work on some other things as well so it wasn't just me trying to read of course but still it was pretty good um but it is a little bit slow going for me as far as investment um I appreciate the siblings aspect but we had this whole thing the whole starting scene was about this guy and it was not very <laughs> good or comfortable or enjoyable so okay so I am now on page 150 something, 158, 158, so I'm a good bit further and I have to say that I'm, I'm having some issues with some things. Uh, I feel like the main character is way too harsh on her brother that has distanced himself from the Heather from Bookables read this a while back and um she talked about the conflict being a little bit over the top and i actually have to agree with her um the conflicts with the wedding everything going wrong is a little bit too overkill um it's specifically because that's not the only conflict that we have going on. We actually also have like little things pop in that are unnecessary. That our main character is very hard on certain people and very unfair with certain people. Her brother Danny brought his girlfriend Brooke and she's very hard on Brooke like she won't let Brooke in and be a part of the group even though like I, I get it that you were expecting to have like just your family or whatever but and then additionally uh there's another brother Mike who is distanced from the family we found out why just now and I I'm sorry but like this whole time she's been so hard on him and like acting like it's his fault that he's you know wrong for for being distanced but like after what happened to him and after what certain people did to him he has every right to set that boundary and separate himself and not um not want to be involved in the, the he has every right to to want to be distanced while i understand that he is harboring unforgiveness i think that he is <sighs> he's also trying to set up a boundary because there was no remorse on the other end and so i completely I completely get where he's at and I think that she's being unfair this whole time we've been thinking that like he's distanced himself for like like he did something wrong or whatever no it was definitely not that someone else wronged him and uh, 
Oh, man. I'm really frustrated now because I really wanted to read another Morgan Madsen and it'd be amazing and so much fun and I'm not having fun because this book is too much is happening at once. Um, we have characters that are mentioned in the synopsis but like in the last 50 pages haven't been present. There's way too many things that she's trying to do in this book. Uh, so no wonder it's so long. Um, it's way, it's way too busy. This is not how I planned on this series, video series starting out. I have read a hundred more pages today. Wow. All of the same complaints that I had in the last update remain the same. I'm not hating the book, but it's definitely not living up to my enjoyment of the other two. I was so hopeful that this was gonna at least just be like a three star. But with the way things are going, I think it's gonna have to be a two. I got to, um, 117 pages from the end last night, and now I am 60 pages from the end, and we get to the wedding this morning. We get to the wedding, like the actual ceremony part of the wedding day, and everything continues to go wrong, and I really hated that. Um... It was over the top in a frustrating way, not in an enjoyable way. In the fact that it was like they'd already struggled so much and it, it was so unrealistic. Like, yes, sometimes weird things happen at weddings at the ceremony, but usually it's like one or the other you have struggles before, after, or you have a little bit here and a little bit there, but it's not a nightmare the entire time. And that's what this whole thing has been, is just a nightmare the entire time. We're getting this love triangle type situation now, all of a sudden. The wedding's over. The whole issue with the estranged brother comes up and they're arguing and she, she pushed the buttons, the main character pushed the buttons and brought it up. And she's on the side of like acting like it's all his fault, even though he's the victim here, instead of letting it lie and letting her have her wedding day, they drop, the parents drop this huge bomb, and I am so frustrated because it was so horrible to do that to your daughter on her wedding day and to take away what should be about her and her love and her marriage and like she already had so many things go wrong. Recognizing the reality that Morgan, Morgan Madsen cannot be a favorite author of mine at this time. Unless this is a crazy outlier, she's a sometimes author for me. <laughs> Um, Save the Date was a flop for me, uh, and I'm very disappointed by that. I was expecting it to be like maybe a three or a four, and it is a two. I would say that my favorite is Since You've Been Gone. My second would be um, Amy and Roger's Epic Detour, and then obviously coming out at the bottom is save the date. That's what's frustrating is these two are older than this one. This is her most recent of the three. Um, Amy and Roger's epic detour looks to be like the first and then uh, second chance summer goes in there and then since you've been gone and then this one after the unexpected everything. So like that's just weird to me that it's like a regression. Hello, so I am now back 
several months later and I'm ready to try one more option for my um, Morgan Matson situation and so the new Morgan Matson that came out it is about a girl who has this big summer planned and everything with her dad and stepmom and then suddenly gets this letter from her grandparents that she didn't really know anything about um, because her mom died when she was three so she didn't have any contact with her mom's side of the family after that fact she actually sent a letter she had this whole summer planned but then they sent this letter and um, invited her to come and spend the summer with them apparently it's a she gets to do this now before it's too late which we don't know exactly why so it turns out that her family actually uh, or her grandparents actually live at this sleepaway camp or they own this sleepaway camp um but it's no longer running a multicultural family just from page one i was already concerned about morgan um writing middle grade versus ya um, I was concerned that she was trying to write down to the readers just a little bit too much and like over explaining some things which I thought was a little bit frustrating but uh, I haven't really felt that way so much since then and then on their way there the person driving her has to stop for gas and so she goes into the gas station and goes to get an icy and runs into this girl who's wearing all white and spills it all over her plot twist it's her cousin in honor of the uh firefly summer to replicate the uh meet cute of our main character with her cousins but my gas station doesn't have ICs. the one that's in town or any of the ones in town i don't think have ICs. but um we do have these fango um sodas the one that she had was red i could have gotten the strawberry but this one's cotton candy and i got it because it's the best and then i don't know if i told you guys this but her cousin was uh, gonna get some junior mints um she offered to buy her junior mints for her to make up for spilling her icy all over her white shirt so i shall be eating some junior mints as well hit the 100 pages um hit part two she's kind of been waffling back and forth the whole time on whether she's gonna stay or not and she's finally decided that she's definitely gonna stay um but uh we also met the people who live on the other side that there's two different camps and um we met the son of the guy who owns the one the other one and the other one isn't a camp anymore they built condos on it and um apparently he's claiming that he owns the land for their camp as well um and so that's a whole big shebang of this book that was her mom's uh that she had and it's also happens to be a mystery book which is fun because of the fact that the main character loves mystery books so it's kind of fun that uh her mom also read mysteries and happened to have this specific one that has to do with the camp and it had like a note in it where she like annotated and said something about trying something uh that was in the books so that's really interesting and i can't wait to see where that goes and how that relates this far and I'm having an excellent time this is so fun um yes and also yes this is top-notch this is what I am looking for out of a camp middle grade book this is yes it's perfect so far it's it's pretty much perfect counting He's lost his blue one though. Oh no! Where's the blue worm? Wow! Where is the blue worm? Did it go bye bye? I found it. Mommy got it. Hooray! Mom found 
garbage. Yay! Plot-wise, I feel like the pacing isn't perfect. Um, but we're getting lots of camp fun. I think that I can definitively say that I just have to be very careful about what I pick up from Morgan Madsen to be able to continue reading from this author. Okay, very quick update. I never came back and actually ended this video. So, the Morgan Matson situation. I finished The Firefly Summer and while I did have a couple of things that were kind of annoying or kind of like imperfect, for the most part it was an amazing time and I had so much fun reading it. So, basically the way that this um, DTR is playing out is um, I don't know what term I would use to define this particular relationship but um, I'm thinking somewhere along the lines of like on again off again maybe it would be the term where I think that some of their books are for me and some of their books are not I think is the term we're going for and the reason I say that is because some of the other books that Matson has put out, um, like Take Me Home Tonight, have the vibe of being chaotic and over the top in the same vein of Save the Date and would not work for me. Whereas others definitely um, have worked for me and so I think it just depends on what the vibe of the, 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 the vibe of the book is. So. We shall see uh, what comes out from Morgan Matson in the future, but it's been like several years in between books, so I'm not expecting anything to happen anytime soon continuing with this author, but it was a fun adventure and a great place to start. So stay tuned for more videos like this. I have one for Ruth Ware and one for Riley Sager that I have been uh, uh, in the process of working on and I filmed clips of the last two books that I've read from both of them and I have more books from them to read so um, they will span like span time a little bit like this one did um, you may have heard Kaiden in the background in a few clips where he sounded way younger than he is now um, that's because some of these clips were filmed last February um, like I read Save the Date last February so yeah Anyways, um, speaking of Kaiden, he is here now, so I'm gonna go. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night, whatever time it is for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so that you can join the Bear Scouts and the notification bell down below so that you can be notified when I post, but most importantly, so that I can see you again very soon. Peace out, Bear Scouts. <laughs> Yeah.